Hey guys, Buildzoid here with another PCB uh, breakdown video. Today we're taking a look at a Titan X PCB because somebody requested a 980 Ti PCB and all the 980 Ti PCBs I could find were ugly. Like the photos were bad. So this is a Titan X PCB. It's identical. Like, literally. All, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's identical and that's a really, like, you know, that that's identical enough for you not to have to worry about it. Uh, this is also very similar to the 780 Ti PCB and the Titan Black Edition PCB. So if you have either of those cards, most of what I explain here is going to be transferable to those as well. Um, so with all that out of the way, let's get to the actual analysis. So first things first, Core Voltage. We got two banks of Core Voltage VRM on this card. Uh, this is where they're located. And they look very weird, if you know anything about VRM design, because we got four MOSFETs, right, in each, four MOSFETs in each, and we got only three inductors in each, right, so that's three. I only got three of those, so basically those inductors are being shared between the MOSFETs, and that's just some fancy circuit layouting that I don't understand. I'm not an electrical engineer, uh, you know, so... But somebody told me that, yes, you can, in fact, lay this out in such a way that this works just fine. And, yeah, so I'm just going to, you know, go with that and ignore the fact that, yeah, this VRM layout doesn't really make any sense to me. Um... So the actual MOSFETs, yep, there's only one circuit per phase in, well, per, yeah, well, yeah, it, let's call it a phase, um, per phase in this VRM. So the thing here is that these are Fairchild Semiconductor, these, these are from Fairchild Semiconductor, these are uh, 6283, yeah. No, 6823A uh, Dr. Moss MOSFETs. These are rated at 60 amps, uh, you know, current throughput, in, out. They, they integrate everything, high side, low side driver. There's everything's in them. So you literally just need to provide a PWM signal for these. So these offer, you know, the usual um, more efficiency, less implementation cost, less tooling costs. You know, they're, uh, they're convenient to use. They use up less PCB space. Um, so yeah, these are very high current, they're 60 amps, there's, you know, eight of them in this VRM in total, so we got a 480 amp VRM here, and that's actually what makes me most sad about today's videos, because I can't, today's video, because I can't rip on in video about low quality VRMs, because this, this isn't low quality, I mean, it's still not enough for LN2 usage, but it's not low quality, um, so... Yeah, I can't rip on NVIDIA about this. That sucks. But let's keep going on with the video. So yeah, these are 480... Uh, this is a 480 amp VRM. Basically, you're going to be safe up to 1.4 volts. You don't want to go above 1.4 volts. Even above 1.4 volts, you should be fine. Uh, by my calculations, up to 1.6 volts, you really shouldn't be encountering any issues. But your core, on the other hand, will probably degrade a lot once you start going above 1.45 volts. Um, other than that, 980 Ti's are well known for not scaling with voltage on ambient, you know, ambient cooling. So going above 1.3 volts on this VRM really doesn't make sense if you have a 980 Ti. If you have a 780 Ti or a Titan Black Edition, then yeah, sure, that there you can push up to 1.4 volts there, and it'll actually help with overclocking. So you might want to do that. Um, and you have plenty of current available to do it, so there's no worries about this VRM going up in flames. So that's good. Uh, it's still not a super great VRM, because while I did say this has eight phases, it doesn't really have eight phases, because the voltage controller, which is here, with the little X on it, so that's the voltage controller for this VRM. This is a four-phase voltage controller. So, yeah. And basically, it just hooks into each of these, and, yeah. Again, I'm not going to explain how these exactly uh, cycle, because that's the thing I don't get, how these cycle. But basically, this thing can drive eight, uh, you know, driverless, uh, well, Dr. Moss MOSFETs, 
and just fine because these have their drivers integrated so this can just dump a signal into two of them at the same time and everything is okay so yeah power wise this vrm is great signal signal quality like power quality wise it's not so great we don't have a whole lot of inductors there's not a very big capacitor bank there's an even smaller capacitor input bank and yeah this here is kind of significant this capacitor bank here but again it, it's not like it could be a lot bigger and this especially here is kind of pathetic when you consider how much free like how much empty pcb space is behind here and then also the fact that these are all unused capacitor well mostly unused capacitor pads so yeah this pcb as far as noise suppression is kind of crap but at least you have lots and lots of power on tap so that's good and uh also depending on how this is driven this could actually be reasonably clean if it's driven at high enough frequency of course i don't know uh more frequency it's driven at or how noisy this vrm is because i don't have the card so i can't measure it i do have the equipment to measure this kind of thing but i don't have the card so i can't measure it so yeah so core voltage you're set on air cooling and water cooling on ln2 you're not set because on ln2 the power consumption of all the big uh nvidia cards like the 780 ti and the 980 ti and the titan x is insane it goes absolutely crazy once you put these cards on ln2 because you push much much higher clocks much much higher voltage and even with 400 amp 480 amps on tap it's not enough the kingpin has some i think 700 or 800 amp vrm the galaxy hall of fame 980 ti has a 960 amp vrm the matrix has a yeah again something ridiculous for the vrm i think it was like it was like a 12 phase with again 60 amps per phase so you know 720 amps again so huge huge vrms on the ln2 cards this vrm is not huge but it's plenty for air cooling and water cooling and basically any 980 ti or 780 ti user who's just going to use it for gaming so let's move on from the core voltage onto the, uh, you know, memory voltage. Uh, so memory voltage is all taken care of by this bank here. That's including the capacitors and MOSFETs. So I didn't look these guys up because honestly, I can't find a picture that's high enough res for me to discern what on earth is written on these. However, this is a two phase, uh, real two phase uh memory vrm so you know it's reason like it's actually pretty good by memory vrm standards and you know even if these were budget mosfets which these obviously aren't these are actually pretty decent just based on the packaging these could be 20 amp 30 amp mosfets and you have plenty of power on tap because ram runs at very very high voltages so you know to deliver a lot of power into the vram you don't need a lot of current because 1.5 volts times 40 is 60 watts whereas 1 volt times 40 is 40 watts so you know the, the you need less current for vram you just need a lot of voltage so yeah uh this thing and this vrm is controlled by this chip down here and i have confirmed that because i could actually read what's on it this is in fact the memory voltage controller so uh let's first take care of the power limit on this card so first of all we got to identify our shunts so that's one of our shunts another shunt and another shunt so these three are everything these three take care of power measurement and again just short them out with whatever you want you can use cool laboratory liquid ultra copper solder wire wh whatever just short them out somehow i personally recommend cool laboratory liquid ultra because you can remove it with isopropanol and yeah it, it'll stay on on its own pretty well that stuff is not particularly liquid if you don't put too much of it so yeah and though you do have to get be careful with it to not get it on any aluminum because it will eat through it um so yeah so that's your power limit taken care of um let's take a closer look to at um the voltage controllers because i actually have data sheets for these guys so i can actually show you how to volt mold these physically uh even though i don't see why you would want to do that because you know there's non-physical you can get bios molds for 780 ti's 980 ti's and all of these cards so first up core voltage 
this pin right here. You measure this pin that I just highlighted in orange, you measure that to ground, and based on what resistance you get, you calculate how much you need to lower the resistance to increase the voltage, and I'm going to explain that in another video that should come out sometime this week where I explain everything about hard modding. So basically just remember this pin is the one you want to measure. This is called a feedback pin. So yeah, and basically I'm always going to highlight this pin in my, uh, you know, reviews. I'm not, uh, well, PCB reviews. I'm never, not necessarily always going to provide the actual values you need to work, you know, to mod the voltage because if I don't have the card, I don't know what values there are. There's only so much I can read off and there's not much to read on a capacitor or a resistor and I don't even know how it's traced. So yeah, I can't provide values without having the card in hand, but if you do have the card in hand, it's just a case of measuring with a digital multimeter from this to ground and then doing a simple calculation, which I will explain later. So on that note, this controller also has a current sensing pin down here. I am pretty sure that if you just cut that pin, you will have absolutely no power limit on the core voltage. I'm also not 100% sure if it won't disable the card because there are some cards where this pin is used as a safeguard to make sure that everything is fine on the VRM. And if you cut it and it's reading no power, it's gonna trigger a, you know, like, what no power and it's going to prevent the card from starting up now on these specific voltage controllers from and on semiconductor this is usually not the case at least i've never encountered a voltage controller from on semi that behaves like this but there is a chance that it does this and i can't test without having the card in hand so while this is an option i really don't recommend doing this okay because it's really hard to reverse a cut pin it's really hard to reverse this without screwing up all the other pins, because here I have it nice and zoomed in, but this thing is smaller than, like, my pinky. So imagine how ni like how fun that would be to solder if you screwed up. Um, so yeah, so with that out of the way, let's take a look at the memory uh, voltage controller. And this thing is even simpler to mod. Uh, I also have it pulled up, and that's this pin right here. And same procedure as on the voltage control uh, V core uh, measure from this orange dot to ground, and then you know calculate a resistance and you know measure the resistance from this to ground, calculate stuff and uh, adjust voltage as needed, um, which will then allow you to you know tweak your memory voltage. And this actually is useful because as far as I know, there's no way to do memory over voltage on reference cards with BIOSes. So this is a useful hard mod, um, depending on if you actually need more memory frequency, which you probably won't. But you know, if you do, well, that's your option. That's your option for getting more memory frequency. For memory voltages, I generally recommend sticking around 1.7. If you really want to push it, 1.75. And then if you're going like, in, you know, if you don't really care about the card surviving, you can push it all the way to 1.8. But that's where I sort of draw the line for myself. I've never actually pushed 1.8 in my memory, at least. And I might be misremembering. Uh, I might have pushed 1.85 through VRAM, but I'm pretty sure I never went over 1.75. So yeah, that's basically all there is to the this PCB. So again, 90% um, of what I said here applies to the 780 Ti, Titan Black Edition, 980 Ti, and uh, GTX Titan X. Uh, on the 980 Ti note, this also applies to the EVGA 980 Ti SC+. So, you know, that that's basically what the viewer requested. Um, he requested that card, so that's why I chose uh, this PCB to do. Um, so if you want to see a card done, uh, post down in the comments below. Uh, right now I already have a few cards planned that I want to do. They're all AMD, because you're all going to keep throwing in videos at me, so I'm just going to do my AMD cards. Uh, <laughs> do my AMD cards and then go back to doing NVIDIA cards. Uh, so yeah, that's really all there is to this PCB. Um, yep. I don't think I missed anything. If you think I've missed anything, you can leave a comment down below. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, oh yeah, and consider donating, because obviously I can bring you better content if I have money to throw at 
graphics cards and stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, and I can bring you content faster uh, as well. So yeah. Oh, and for the donations, you just go use the blog link in the in the description of the video, and that'll take you to my blog. And there's a donate button, so you can find that. Um, you know, if you really want to donate, you can find that. If you don't want to donate, eh. Um, so yeah, I think I covered everything. So yeah, the you know voltage modding video I, is going to be up soon. Well soon by my definition there's going to be a stream saturday this video is so long because there's not going to be a there's no stream for this wednesday um because well i don't have anything prepared on saturday i'm going to be doing some intel stuff before because I, I still need to do the new motherboard review and whatever and yeah so that's that Thank you all for watching, like, share, subscribe, and goodbye. And I forgot to press there.